As of today, Grand Theft Auto is officially 25 years old now. Can you believe that? November 28th, 1997 was the first official release of GTA 1 on PC. This was proven a month ago when everyone thought that October 21st was the anniversary until some of us began doubting this, and a very kind former DMA employee shared an old email proving the actual release date. The first Grand Theft Auto was met with quite a lot of controversy back in the day. British tabloids couldn't believe that such a game was made. By the way, much of the controversy was actually encouraged by DMA design and specifically a publicist that was working for them. They must have realized that there was no better free advertising for their product than for it to end up on the news every single day. It even made its way to the British Parliament, where it was debated on very briefly almost a year before it even came out. This was a franchise that knew how to make waves early on. But it's not like some weird newspaper was going to stop people from playing it. American media was obviously not much kinder towards it, and my brother and cousins still played it. Through them, this is also how I first came to play Grand Theft Auto. In fact, Grand Theft Auto 1 was the first GTA that I ever played. I was super young at the time, too young to probably even understand what the hell was going on half the time since I was only about 3 or 4, but I definitely had fun. Probably more fun playing it back then than I did recently because the game is very rough around the edges to say the least. Before its time, it was amazing. Little could we have guessed how big this franchise would get. Or what a roller coaster every game's development and release would turn out to be. I'm sure I've already talked about this a lot by now, and I don't want this to be a 10 hour video of me just nerding out about it, so I'll keep it short. GTA 1 was definitely a new experience for pretty much everybody who played it, and it did well enough that it warranted a sequel. And then we got many more games out of it, and a franchise that can now be considered a cultural icon. Another fine piece of entertainment given to us by that island nation on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Thanks guys. It really is incredible to see how much the franchise has grown in the last 25 years. And even though there has been a pretty big gap between new titles, we've now got a new entry to look forward to. Legally, it might not be such a good idea to talk too much about this, so all I'll say is that I'm looking forward to it. But we all know that with certain key people no longer being there, the game is going to feel quite different too, I'm sure. I'm not trying to sound overdramatic about it, but I think it's kind of a given. Now, provided that Dan Hauser didn't actually come up with the whole story before he left Rockstar, and if nothing changed after he left, then with him no longer being involved in that creative process, or Laszlo no longer coming up with in-game media, whoever's going to take on the work is going to have some big shoes to fill. And they're definitely going to lend a hand in why the game will feel different, I think. Funny thing, it almost feels like things are coming back full circle to the original GTA, where we no longer have Dan Hauser, Laszlo, or Leslie Benzies in the credits. None of them had any involvement in the first Grand Theft Auto. In fact, the entire thing was come up with before Rockstar was even a thing. But you still have to give this game props. As weird as it was and as strange to play as it may be, without this, we wouldn't have had all of this. So besides Rockstar, the people you should really be thanking are the developers at DMA Design who came up with it. This will include people like David Jones and Mike Daly, who you might remember a few months ago was hit with a copyright strike from Rockstar over his own work from the mid-1990s on the original Grand Theft Auto. As you might know, originally it was a game called Race and Chase. But during testing, they realized that when the police cars kept on crashing into the player while they're chasing them, they found it so hilarious that they decided to build the game around that glitch. For all the jank that GTA 1 has, it's still a charming game. I should probably attempt to play it again sometime. Can't say I would make it very far, but at least we'd get to enjoy its kick-ass soundtrack. This is where I think Rockstar's initial involvement as BMG Interactive really came through. This was also our first time as an audience getting to hear the music of Craig Connor. Now that we're about to end this video, I'll leave you off with one of my favorites. What do you think about how Grand Theft Auto is now 25? What was the first game in the franchise that you played? And why did you come to enjoy it so much? Let me know, and thank you for watching.